Hello, I'm Dick at Reedy's Home of Music, and I'm with Mark from Boss. Hello, Dick. Hello, people. Uh, today, we're looking at the Boss GT1000. Um, with these kind of things, I always try and stay away from, you know, I'll watch the initial Boss video, I'll try and stay away from reviews until, well, ideally, I can sit down with you and you can really show me yeah, yeah, sure. what's wrong with it. So, I think the idea of this video is just do a quick overview of yeah. what it is, what it can do some because you've been using it for weeks now haven't you i've been using this and um, fell off about 14 15 weeks i think now um and again i'm still finding things out about this yeah. it's blown my mind um everyone's gonna think oh yeah you say that because you work for boss but you know i'm a guitar player end of the day i don't just use boss stuff everyone knows me um i use basically what i think is going to do the job for me but i think what's important is what makes my life easy as a guitar player and this is doing lots and lots of things that has you know helped me out but also uh, made me spend more time at the bar shall we say so i don't know. we'll maybe cover that a little bit yeah, later good stuff um so that's it it's we want to hear things from you someone who has used it yeah about what's you know like you say little tricks you can do here yeah, little mm -hmm. time saving things you can do yeah um because the idea of it i suppose is to make your life easier and not have to carry around an enormous pedal board yes 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 we've all carried enormous pedal boards we love enormous pedal boards but the older you get and the the, the more smaller the gigs you do nowadays it's not really practical um, what I'm going to start with, I'm going to give you a really brief overview now uh, of the actual technology because it's really, really important um, that we understand what is different about a GT1000, what is different with this technology compared to anything else that's out mm -hmm. there in the market. Um, and again, I mentioned before, I'm a guitar player. There are other products that are out there now that are super cool that you know people use, that I use, that I own as well. Um, but there's something that is really unique to GT1000 in the way that the technology works. And I'm just going to briefly move off track really quick, but we all know about Katana amplifiers. Yes. We know about the Blues Cube amplifiers. The technology that's in these, um, without going too deep, it's essentially, you know, it's, it's, it's recreating the whole signal path of like, you know, a guitar goes into a preamp, talks to a power amp, which talks mm. to a speaker. What people don't realize is in a real life old school, you know, amp environment, the speaker depended on the way the air moves, talks to the power amp, back talks to the preamp. As the guitar player, we feel that. It's essentially why we love the sound of really old amps when we crank them. Yeah. The technology inside GT1000 is essentially doing that. So it's not just taking a snapshot of a sound where you get, you know, a classic preamp sounds great through this power amp, sounds great through that speaker, and it's like a picture. This is actually back talking. So it's a constant two-way communication chain. Right. So the first thing I noticed from plugging into this unit is the actual feel of it. And that's really important. So anyone who's sitting on the fence thinking about this technology, I would definitely say, you know, come down to read these plug in, get your headphones on even as well, because it absolutely works. And the first three patches on it, I think you'll be pretty much just the patches you switch on, you'll be blown away by it. So it's essentially like the Katana, the Blues Cube, that technology, that's evolved now into a really small, portable, yeah. you know, compact floor unit. That's it. That and the technology is moving really quickly. Mm -hmm. And, you know, a couple of years ago, some of the digital distortions that you'd get didn't sound as good mm -hmm. as, you know, plugging in, yeah. you know, a DS1 or something into, into an amp. Absolutely. But, it's moved that quick and I know some people are still a bit wary of using some digital overdrives and distortions, but you plugging it in before, it's amazing. It really is so good. I mean, the, the, the way we're actually monitoring this right now, let, let you know, yeah. is we're going left and right, uh, main out into the, the interface, so you'll hear this in stereo. Uh, just for monitoring purposes, um, gt 1000 has got sub outs, which are XLR. Uh, we're, even though know, I've got the stereo, it's literally going in mono into the Boss Acoustic singer amp. Which you might think, what the hell? But it's working really good, isn't it? It's working really it? good. Yeah. So we can actually hear. Yeah. You will hear this in stereo. Me and Dick will hear this in mono. Yeah. Um, but, you know, again, 
the, the big thing for me, I might mention this several times a day, is the fact that we have this feel factor. And again, that's what everyone loves about Katana amps. They feel like you're plugged into a real amp. In, and that in turn affects how you play it, I think. Absolutely. Because, you know, if it sounds good, you're probably going to get more carried away yeah, and play more shredding solos. Exactly, you know. What if, like. I mean, again, I, I, you know, if you think about, you know, multi effects units. Uh, over the years, as a guitar player, you know, we have a tendency when we get the latest multi-effects unit, a lot of time, what we tend to do is go through all the presets. Yeah. And there's a couple of hundred on there and it's like watching, you know, TV at home and there's nothing going, you know, you're looking for something that's going to catch your attention, you go, next, 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 whatever. The thing I noticed about this when I first plugged it in is I spent about four hours on one patch. Yeah. And it's because I had the feel of I was plugged into this really cool amp that was dynamic. It was responding to the way that I play and things mm. like that. So just to really quick, uh, quickly answer your question, this is bank one preset one. So the first thing you do when you plug this in, it's called premium drive. Now, the cool thing on it, this is just your stock sound. So if I give it... <laughs> It's got that real nice. It sounds massive. It sounds massive, yeah. Now I'm just rolling the volume back on this. It's got that nice clean sound. And again, if I want to boost it again, something like a tube game or something like that. So it's no a digital distortion. Yeah, it's coming a hell of a long yeah, way. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but again, what you've got to remember is the way this technology is working. Mm. It's essentially doing the full signal path of the way that distortion pedal yeah, or that how drive, it reacts with yeah. With so the way else. exactly. You know, if you're an old school guy, you know, who's grew up playing through really old valve amps and we love them. Non master volume amps. No one more than me loves the sound of class A amp. I will bore you to tears with it. <laughs> But oh, he has them. Many, many times. Many, <laughs> Him many and Gaz times. together are just the worst combination <laughs> it is, it of is. gear nerds. Um, but yeah, essentially that type of experience, that type of feel, you know, this is probably one of the first things, actually it's not it's definitely the first thing that I plugged into and went, okay, we're kind of at a point now with yeah. um, digital stuff where we're, this feel thing is, is something that's really, really important. So I think that's, you know, really the big thing yeah. I want to mention on it. And I mean, it'll hopefully, if Dale's doing his job right, <laughs> it'll sound great on the video, but... Give it, give it a thumbs up or whatever you do nowadays. But if come like, down yeah. and try them out because yeah. it's a complete, it's a yeah, completely yeah. different thing in it when you actually yeah. plug into it and play it. And again, this is really quick overview video of this. So there's the technology thing there. I did mention about that and I went through that quite a bit. There's, there's quite a few other things on this as well, which are unique to it, as in this product in the marketplace compared to other things. Um, we were talking before uh, we went on camera about as a guitar player when we're on stage and when you using a board where you've got lots of different sounds going on at once and then you need to jump ship and go to say like you know a really big drive sound sometimes you may get that stutter uh, that's essentially it's not the problem with the unit it's normally the cpu that's in it you know you get the cpu dropout mm. this has actually got a 32 bit 96 kilohertz floating point processors inside it that sounds really complicated. And in English, that means? In, you know, I, I mean, that's like a scouser saying that. So, you know, <laughs> I know what that, that, what that means is it's like having the latest, fastest yeah. piece, you know, processor. So you can challenge this. And I know for a fact that you could essentially put every single block on, every single amp sim, every single thing on at once. So it's get this crazy sound. It's oscillating stuff like that. You could save that as a patch. You could then do something every single amp block, blah, blah, blah. Same again, but totally different type of effects and settings. Save that as a patch, play it, 
go in between, you won't have Nothing. any dropout, any latency lag like whatsoever. It's because yeah. of the processor in it. The other thing I want to add on to that is when you plug this in through a big, you know, if you're gigging with it, which I've done many times now, when you're going through a really big, decent PA in, in, a, in a venue, the quality of the effects are insane. They're absolutely insane. And that's because of this 32-bit chip. It's just mm -hmm. so much headroom. Um, it's, you know, for me, uh, at the moment, the World Cup song, you might be watching this two years later, whatever, <laughs> you're over. But, you know, if you imagine going in a, in a room or a pub with your mates and then they've got like a room where they've got like a standard definition TV on, you're going to watch the match there or you could go into this room, which has got ultra HD, 4K, HDR and stuff like that. This is kind of like the 4K HDR technology. And available having nowadays. a good sound as well, knowing, being confident that you've got a good sound on stage is going to be so much like more peace of mind for you playing yeah. as well. Yeah, we will cover something in another yeah. video a bit later, but one of the other features uh, on this is the fact that you've got a Bluetooth editor. And again, this is a first really for, um, a, a, as a guitar player, what we can do. And it is my favorite thing that I've found on GT1000. There's quite a lot of things, but this is my favorite thing. We will cover this in a different video and I will show you how I use it. But essentially, um, we can use our phone, our tablet. Um, you can also use like a Mac or PC if you're connected to it. Yeah. But it's more about the hands-free stuff. Yeah. As in what you can do where, just really quickly, what you could do is just imagine being able to have a, be in a venue where you could you know, play a riff and you go out front, listen to yourself playing that riff. But not only you can do a sound check, you can actually tune your effects to the room that you're in. So it's like really quick. You could get the best sound ever. You'd be in rehearsal all week with your band. You go and gig on the, the venue on the Saturday. Sounds and it's completely different. Sounds yeah. completely different. And it's like you spend probably half the gig trying to retweak your sound. Mm. And then you do a gig the night after that. And it's it's like, the, you know, the, yeah. a different room again. Just imagine being able to do, like, list sound check, tune your effects to the venue and then save it. So every time you go back to that venue, instantly recall it. Mm. You go on stage, the first note you hit, you're like, wow, that's exactly what I want people to hear. Yeah. Um, so that's like the, the Bluetooth um, editor. And we're gonna go through that in a separate video. Yeah, do that in a separate video. There will be a link I to. I will show you how to do it as well. It's, it's super easy. I mean, I can, I can do this, um, but uh, yeah, that means you, you know, especially if you're playing a covers band and you're doing the same venues, you literally need to sound check once. Yeah. And not only sound check, but your effects everything is tuned to that venue so you're going to sound like absolutely killer there's more, nothing more time at the bar always a good thing <laughs> always a good thing yes yeah you wouldn't think i'm like 16 would you <laughs> more time at the bar <laughs> um yes we've got that and then the other thing which i think is really important to know alongside the tech is when you um you know you plug direct into a pa to get the this sound and exactly the way you want to hear it in its glory um, but you're on stage and you've got a specific amp, it could be a tube amp, it could be a um, solid state, whatever. What you can do now, which we've never been able to do, is you can actually get feed out of this, go into the amplifier within the output setting. As long as you tell the GT1000 what amplifier you're plugged into, that amplifier then becomes part of that two-way communication oh, wow. chain. So normally what we've done with multi-effects in the past is we go out of this into the return. So yeah. we're bypassing the preamp stage of an amplifier go into the return, and then we're just using the power amp stage, but that doesn't give you that feel, yeah. because it's not reacting, you know, to, to, you know, you're not going through that full preamp power amp speaker mm. back talk stage. On GT1000, as long as you tell it what you're plugged into, that becomes part of the two-way communication. So will too. it react slightly differently to totally. turn it? Oh, wow. Yeah, there's totally. There's been Didn't a that. couple of software updates since it's been launched, and I know there's a, um, the specific Amplifier, shall we say now, that boss of, you know, um, their, their particular brand where if you're using a specific brand of amp, mm. you can literally tell it what you're plugged into. Yeah. The tech boss engineers have, have brought that in so that mm. we know what this does. It's not just colouring the sound of an amp. Yeah. The amp becomes part of this two-way communication yes. chain and this is totally unique. There's nothing yeah. out there that can do that. Well. Um, a couple of quick things, got a looper on it. Yeah, everyone's got a looper on it nowadays. 
the looper will become more clear to me when we do this video later mm -hmm. about the virtual sound check. Um, so when you get out of the box, there's 200 preset sounds on it. Um, there's 200 empty spaces where you can save patches yeah. and numerous patches. So you can get like one. your whole set list together and yeah. just, yeah, song by song. Absolutely, you've got the USB out on it. Um, there's, you know, there's, there's nothing that you can challenge this thing to do that it will, it'll stutter. Yeah. It's just super fast. There might have been a point where we'd say, you know, oh, has, how many modulations has it got? How many amp types has it got? It's got everything. I mean, like, yeah. what's it not got? I mean, it's... imagine being able to have, you know, five delay blocks plus a master delay block plus yeah. four different effects blocks where you can choose basically any pedal, mm. not just boss pedals. There's simulations of some amazing yeah. pedals in there as well. Um, but then being able to stack them up in like series or parallel and mm. things like that, it's, it's crazy what you can do with it. And again, I've been using this probably about 14 weeks now, um, and I'm still finding things out about it that like, okay, I didn't know you could actually do that. Yeah. Um, but fundamentally for me, um, I would say the feel of this is something that you need to experience. You're not gonna hear it on YouTube and stuff because it's compressed and stuff mm. like that. But as a guitar player, I would seriously plug headphones into this, just play your guitar. The experience I had from it was the old days where like, my certain amplifier was in the other room because yeah. it's so loud. <laughs> but because it was on full, that's the way you use those amps in them days. I was in the you know different room with headphones on, but I still felt, I still had that feel of plugging into an amplifier. Yeah. That's the experience that I've had with this fella. Good. Right, well, thank you very much. Um, and then next video, we're going to talk about this virtual sound check. Certainly will. Check it out.